few could have foreseen the enormous success that Star Trek would attain when it debuted in 1966. However, things weren't as easy behind the scenes as they appeared. Did you know that before Captain Kirk rose to fame, the USS Enterprise was commanded by another captain? Yes, in the original pilot, Jeffrey Hunter played Captain Christopher Pike. However, after just one episode, Hunter abruptly departed the show and William Shatner was cast as Captain Kirk. What caused this to occur then? Keep checking back as we explore the true causes of Hunter's abrupt departure and how it affected Star Trek's future. The show's groundbreaking approach to diversity. During the 1960s, a period of profound social change in the US, Star Trek the original series created history by depicting racial and ethnic diversity in an unprecedented way. As one of the first black women to play a significant part on television, Nichelle Nichols' portrayal of Lieutenant Uhura inspired many, including upcoming generations of actors and civil rights activists. In addition, the series included Russian character Pavel Chekhov and Asian-American actor George Takai as Sulu, emphasizing the concept of world unification aboard the USS Enterprise. This forward-thinking idea of racial cooperation struck a deep chord during the civil rights movement. Jeffrey Hunter's Role as Captain Pike Jeffrey Hunter, a seasoned actor with credits in movies like The Searchers and King of Kings, was the first to command the USS Enterprise as Captain Christopher Pike in Star Trek's original pilot episode, The Cage. Hunter's casting was considered a huge plus for the series, given the Hollywood background. NBC officials, meanwhile, were initially unimpressed with the pilot program and asked for revisions. Hunter's depiction of Pike was hailed for its nuance and gravity, but it marked the start and finish of his career with Star Trek. Viewers were unaware that the show was about to transform significantly, and Hunter's part would shortly be recast. What specifically prompted this decision then? Did Hunter have to step away because of artistic differences, or were there other variables at work? NBC's Reaction to the Pilot Episode NBC officials' reactions to the completion of The Cage, the Star Trek pilot, were not quite unanimous. Although they were fascinated by the show's concept, they thought the tone was too slow-paced and philosophical. Despite praising Jeffrey Hunter's portrayal of Captain Pike, the network wasn't sure if he could continue the series. They were looking for a lead with a more dynamic presence and an action-focused tone for the show. Thus, if Star Trek creators like Gene Roddenberry wanted the show to survive, they were urged to make significant adjustments. The production crew faced a difficult decision due to the network's demands – either recast the lead part or risk losing the chance to advance the series. This marked the start of a crucial event that would permanently alter the trajectory of Star Trek history. Jeffrey Hunter's Reasons for Leaving Although NBC's worries contributed to the lead's recasting, Jeffrey Hunter had his motivations for leaving the Captain Pike role. According to reports at the time, Hunter's wife, Joan Bartlett, pressured him to concentrate on feature films instead of TV parts because she thought that was where the real potential lie. Since a long-term TV show would need much more of Hunter's time and energy, he wasn't incredibly excited about committing to it. The decision to leave Star Trek made more sense given his wife's influence and his hesitancy. Hunter's decision to decline the chance to continue as Captain Pike had less to do with the network's displeasure and more with his professional choices. He had no idea that departing the show would make room for a newcomer who would elevate Star Trek to unprecedented heights. William Shatner Steps In as Captain Kirk Following Jeffrey Hunter's departure from Star Trek, the creators faced the challenge of selecting a replacement. Enter the affable Canadian actor William Shatner, who would play Captain James T. Kirk and become the franchise's famous face. The show had a more daring and action-packed tone because of Shatner's vivacity and fearless portrayal of Kirk, which contrasted with Hunter's more subdued approach to Pike. This modification aligned with NBC's requests for a more captivating show. The crowd was captivated by the dynamic that Shatner created with the rest of the actors especially Leonard Nimoy's Spock. 
His portrayal of Captain Kirk cemented Shatner's place in the history of science fiction and made him synonymous with Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry's Vision for a New Captain The inventor of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry, had a particular idea of what he wanted from his starship captain. Although Jeffrey Hunter portrayed Pike as solemn and reflective, Roddenberry believed that to attract a wider audience, the character needed to be more personable and empathetic. In addition to having command of the ship, Roddenberry desired a captain who led with a spirit of adventure and optimism. Kirk, played by William Shatner, was the ideal example of these traits. He was a perfect fit for the position since he was fearless, adventurous, and frequently acted on instinct. Star Trek, in Roddenberry's opinion, needed these adjustments to ensure its survival, and with Shatner as Kirk, the show had its perfect leader. The Star Trek cast reacts to Jeffrey Hunter's exit. Many cast and crew members were taken aback when Jeffrey Hunter left Star Trek following the initial plot. His portrayal of Captain Pike had established the series' somber and contemplative tone. A significant change in the show's direction occurred with the casting of William Shatner as Captain Kirk. At first, some cast members weren't sure how the new captain's portrayal would fit in with the other characters. But Spock's actor, Leonard Nimoy, quickly adjusted to the new dynamic. Shatner's charm and sense of humor lightened the program's tone and increased the number of opportunities for character interaction and group scenes. The cast eventually came to value the change in course, realizing that Shatner's Kirk gave the show the impetus it needed to continue. NBC's Decision to Reject the Cage NBC's decision to reject The Cage, the original Star Trek pilot, was a significant turning point for the franchise. The network thought the episode was too slow-paced and cerebral for general audiences, despite applauding the show's creative idea and futuristic outlook. NBC requested significant revisions for the second pilot because they wanted a show that was more accessible and action-packed. As a result, the main character was recast and the series' general tone was changed. Given that it paved the way for the version of Star Trek that became a cultural sensation, NBC's rejection of the cage may have turned out to be a boon in disguise. The Decision to Recast Captain Pike In addition to rejecting the cage, NBC asked for cast changes. As a result, William Shatner was chosen to play Captain Kirk instead of Jeffrey Hunter, who played Captain Pike. Hunter had declined the chance to return for the second pilot, which led to a significant change in the tone of Star Trek. Shatner's Kirk was a more gregarious and dynamic leader, while Hunter's Pike was more solemn and reflective. Since Shatner's performance became legendary and established the tone for the remainder of the series, this recasting marked a sea change. Ultimately, the choice benefited the program, resulting in a shift in dynamic that audiences found more compelling. Gene Roddenberry's Vision and Creative Control The inventor of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry, clearly knew what the show should stand for. He initially intended Star Trek to be more than a science fiction adventure series. He saw it as a forum for discussing complex social topics, including racial relations, conflict, and the future of humanity. Conflicts with network officials who prioritized ratings and commercial appeal occasionally resulted from this idea. The show's reputation as a provocative and avant-garde series was partly shaped by Roddenberry's resolve to keep creative control over its course. His impact is evident in the show's progressive viewpoint, philosophical issues, and diverse cast, all of which came to define Star Trek. Leonard Nimoy's Influence on Spock Although Leonard Nimoy's portrayal of Spock became one of Star Trek's defining characteristics, the character's development was a team effort. Spock was initially thought to be more passionate and combative. In contrast to the human character's emotional outbursts, Nimoy proposed making Spock a more rational and composed persona. Spock became a popular favorite due to this choice, which gave him depth. A Jewish blessing Nimoy witnessed as a child inspired Spock's famous hand motion, the Vulcan salute. In addition to molding the character, Nimoy's careful portrayal of Spock changed the show's general dynamic and gave it a philosophical touch that viewers found appealing. 
the unscripted dynamic between William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. A crucial component of Star Trek, the original series, was the chemistry between Leonard Nimoy, Spock, and William Shatner, Captain Kirk. Their spontaneous moments during filming frequently made it to the final edit, which gave their relationship an air of genuineness despite the occasional conflict behind the scenes. Their unique personalities, Spock's rational thinking and Kirk's fervent leadership complemented one another to form one of the most recognizable teams in television history. Even if specific sequences were improvised, many fans valued the organic development of their friendship, which was shaped by the blend of their characters. The Evolution of the Enterprise Design Before its final screen appearance, the USS Enterprise, one of the most iconic ships in science fiction, experienced several design revisions. The ship's original form was more aerodynamic and streamlined, but as the series progressed, it evolved into the recognizable saucer-shaped craft we're familiar with today. The ship's design, which included warp nacelles and a central command bridge, combined futuristic technology with space travel practicality. The finished Enterprise embodied the show's hopeful outlook on humanity's future and represented exploration and adventure. The design likewise impacted the style of other subsequent science fiction properties. Star Trek's Special Effects Pioneers The stories and the spectacular effects in Star Trek were revolutionary. The production team had to develop new methods to make the series' futuristic setting come to life. The show's limited budget forced them to devise inventive ways such as using practical effects and miniatures for space scenes. The transporter, which enabled characters to beam from one place to another, was one of the most remarkable effects. Although it was made with primary lighting effects and camera trickery, the effect ended up becoming one of the show's most recognizable visuals. Star Trek pushed the limits of what was conceivable on television thanks to its creative use of special effects. William Shatner's Leadership on an Offset In addition to leading the Enterprise on screen, Captain Kirk, played by William Shatner, was a leader offset. Shatner, well known for having a strong personality, greatly impacted the production. He frequently worked with the directors and writers to influence the character's growth and the episode's general tone. Shatner's enthusiasm for the project was evident, even though his assertiveness occasionally caused conflict with co-stars. He was vivacious and charismatic in the part, and his commitment kept the production moving forward through challenging times. Shatner's influence expanded beyond Star Trek as he became a prominent figure in popular culture and a franchise defender. The show's struggle for ratings During its initial run, Star Trek suffered with low ratings despite its eventual reputation as a cultural phenomenon. Because of the show's poor popularity, NBC often contemplated canceling it. Nonetheless, a devoted audience supported the performance vocally and through letter-writing campaigns. The core fan base was aware of the show's distinctive fusion of social commentary, philosophy, and adventure. The show's producers had to figure out how to appeal to a broader audience because of the ratings problem, which led to more humorous and action-packed episodes while preserving the series' thought-provoking themes. Even though Star Trek was eventually terminated after three seasons, its legacy in television history was solidified by its syndication success and fan-driven revival efforts. The Rise of Fandom and Conventions Despite its ratings issues, Star Trek had a growing fan base which helped give rise to fan conventions in the 1970s. Fans celebrated the show, interacted with the characters, and expressed their passion for the series at these get-togethers. Over 3,000 people attended the first significant Star Trek conference in New York in 1972, significantly more than anticipated. Even after the show was canceled, Star Trek managed to stay in the public consciousness thanks to the success of these conferences. Fan conventions developed to become a crucial component of the Star Trek heritage, creating a feeling of camaraderie and opening the door for the current, more widespread phenomena of fandom culture. The Influence of Cold War Politics a major impact on Star Trek was the political environment of the 1960s, especially the Cold War. The show frequently allegorized the tensions between the U.S. and the USSR 
using the futuristic space travel scenario. Episodes like Balance of Terror reflected actual conflicts with the Romulans or Klingons standing in for authoritarian countries and the Federation for a hopeful democratic society. The show portrayed the USS Enterprise as a ray of hope for peaceful exploration, reflecting America's aspirations in the space race. In contrast to the anxieties of nuclear destruction, Roddenberry's hopeful outlook on the future showed viewers a cohesive human race cooperating. Guest Stars Who Became Icons Numerous actors who appeared on Star Trek as guests became well-known figures in Hollywood. In The Doomsday Machine, a teenage William Wyndham played Commodore Decker before starting a lucrative career in television and movies. One of the most well-known guest stars in the history of the series was Ricardo Montalban, who portrayed the legendary antagonist Khan in Space Seed and later in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. These visits helped further the careers of aspiring performers and gave the programs more celebrity power. Attracting such talent is a testament to the show's distinct appeal and cultural influence of Star Trek. The Role of Women in Star Trek The representation of women in influential positions in Star Trek was revolutionary because it was uncommon for television in the 1960s. On the Enterprise's bridge, characters such as Nichelle Nichols's Lieutenant Uhura made history as a woman of color in a leadership role. Majel Barrett, who portrayed Nurse Chapel, was a pioneer in her own right and played a significant part in the series. A component of Roddenberry's vision for a more egalitarian and forward-thinking future was his choice to include women in influential positions. The program set the stage for future science fiction shows to feature diverse female characters in influential roles, notwithstanding its shortcomings in terms of gender representation. Controversial Topics Explored on the Show Star Trek never shied away from contentious social and political topics. While other episodes examined themes of battle, peace, and the moral quandaries of scientific discovery, episodes such as Let That Be Your Last Battlefield tackled racism. The show's allegorical style made it possible to explore these subjects in a way that was both thought-provoking and easy for general viewers to understand. Among the most well-known instances is the Plato's Stepchildren episode, in which Captain Kirk and Lieutenant Uhura shared one of the first interracial kisses ever shown on American television. The program broadcasts, despite the network's dread of adverse reactions, solidifying Star Trek as a pioneer in addressing taboo topics. The Birth of the Star Trek Franchise Despite having only three seasons, Star Trek left a lasting legacy. The show found a second home in syndication after being canceled in 1969, and its fan following grew even more fervent than it had during its first run. The creation of Star Trek, the animated series in the 1970s, and ultimately the famous Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979 resulted from this comeback. The creation of Star Trek The Next Generation, which debuted in 1987 and brought the franchise back to life for a new generation of fans, was spurred by the successes of these new initiatives. Since then, the Star Trek world has become a cultural phenomenon adapted into countless television shows, movies, books, and other media. The Introduction of the Vulcan Culture The creation of the Vulcan race, primarily through Leonard Nimoy's Spock, was one of the most intriguing elements of Star Trek. Viewers were first exposed to Vulcan society through ideas such as the Vulcan greeting, the philosophy of logic, and the Pon Far ritual, iconic components that later became mainstays of the franchise. Vulcan society's harmony between reason and emotion reflected human challenges with control and comprehension. In addition to being enjoyable, the investigation of Vulcan civilization demonstrated the possibility of human development. The mystery of Vulcan traditions and Spock's nuanced character development gave the show a distinctive cultural dimension that enthralled viewers. The Show's Influence on Real Science In addition to being revolutionary in entertainment, Star Trek also sparked technological advancements. The show inspired future scientists and engineers to create everything from flip phones, modeled after the Starfleet communicators, to tablets and voice-activated systems resembling the ship's computers. 
Notable individuals like Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman in space, have acknowledged Star Trek as a driving force in their careers. NASA has credited the show with encouraging space research. Today, developments in fields like artificial intelligence and space travel are still motivated by the series' vision of a scientifically and technologically driven future. The Challenges of Special Effects There were several difficulties in producing Star Trek in the 1960s, especially with special effects. Due to financial limitations, the production team had to use their imagination and frequently used realistic effects such as matte paintings for far-off planets and tiny miniatures for spaceships. The show used cutting-edge methods to mimic futuristic technology, like teleportation using basic dissolve effects. Star Trek was able to produce visually stunning episodes that felt innovative despite these constraints. The effects were revolutionary for their time and contributed to Star Trek's reputation as a sci-fi pioneer, even though they might seem archaic by today's standards. The Series' Enduring Fandom The persistent fan base of Star Trek is arguably the most significant testament to the show's legacy. Fans continued advocating for more Star Trek content, producing fanzines and hosting conventions even after the cancelled series. The franchise's comeback, which included the release of new television shows and movies, was greatly aided by this grassroots backing. Even now, hundreds of fans attend Star Trek gatherings to celebrate the show's optimistic outlook on the future. The series has become a cultural phenomenon because of the ardor and devotion of the Star Trek fandom, guaranteeing that its influence will last for many decades. The Influence of Gene Roddenberry's Vision Gene Roddenberry had far more in mind for Star Trek than the conventional television at the time. His vision of a utopian future in which people put aside their differences and cooperated for everyone's benefit was revolutionary. The show was built on Roddenberry's idealistic vision of a world free from discrimination based on nation, gender, or race. During social and political turmoil, audiences who yearned for hope found solace in the progressive beliefs. Roddenberry's hopeful outlook on the future of humanity was reflected in Star Trek, which was more than just entertainment. The Resurgence of Star Trek in the 1980s Despite being cancelled after its third season, Star Trek saw a significant comeback in the 1980s. The desire for fresh Star Trek programming surged once the show's popularity grew through syndication. Star Trek The Motion Picture was released in 1979, and it was followed by several sequels, including the highly regarded Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan in 1982. These movies popularly rekindled interest in the series and prepared the ground for Star Trek The Next Generation's 1987 premiere. This new series solidified Star Trek's position in popular culture by introducing a new cast and set of plots. The Role of Ethics in Star Trek Many Star Trek episodes focused on ethical quandaries, which added complexity to the show's intellectual content. Star Trek frequently compelled its characters to consider complex moral dilemmas, whether they were related to prime directive violations or the ethics of cloning life. Because of their philosophical profundity, episodes such as The Measure of a Man from The Next Generation, which discusses the rights of androids, became favorites among fans. Because of Roddenberry's choice to incorporate these ethical dilemmas into the show's core, Star Trek could go beyond conventional space adventure tales and provide audiences with engaging material long after the credits had rolled. The Cultural Impact of the Klingon Language Although the Klingons were shown in Star Trek as fierce foes, their civilization, especially their language, significantly influenced popular culture. Linguist Mark Orkind invented the Klingon language for Star Trek III The Search for Spock, which evolved into a fully formed, fictitious language with syntax and grammar. The language was adopted by fans who learned to speak it well and even saw it in dictionaries and language apps. This cultural influence further sets Star Trek, apart from other science fiction properties, and is testament to the profundity of the show and the fervor of its fan base. Star Trek's Complex Moral and Ethical Questions The capacity of Star Trek to address complex moral and ethical issues, frequently through allegorical storytelling, was one of its most notable aspects. War, peace, and the worth of human life 
were among the topics covered in episodes such as The City on the Edge of Forever and A Taste of Armageddon. The show challenged viewers to consider politics, culture, and what it means to be human by regularly using alien civilizations to reflect humanity's challenges in the actual world. Because of these provocative plots, Star Trek stands out from other television programs of its day and transcends ordinary sci-fi adventure. The Influence of NASA and Space Exploration Star Trek has a significant impact on actual space travel in addition to pop culture. NASA scientists and astronauts were captivated by the show's portrayal of space travel, complete with intergalactic missions and cutting-edge equipment. The first shuttle in the real-life space shuttle program was named Enterprise in honor of the show. Numerous NASA employees have publicly acknowledged that Star Trek motivated their decision to pursue professions in space exploration and science. The show served as a ray of hope for upcoming space projects by igniting a passion for exploration and the potential outside Earth's atmosphere. The Legacy of Star Trek In terms of science fiction and television, Star Trek's legacy is unmatched. What started as a three-season program developed into a vast franchise that now includes numerous TV shows, movies, books, and memorabilia. Its hopeful outlook on the future has motivated numerous scientists, artists, and fans. More than 50 years after its premiere, Star Trek remains relevant because of its enduring themes of togetherness, adventure, and the quest for knowledge. The show's message of optimism for the future of humanity is still relevant today, even as new Star Trek television shows and movies are released. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe! Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon 